So before I go into what we have done for manufacturing from Snowflake side, I'll do a quick introduction about Snowflake uh, data platform. What does it do? Uh, obviously, Snowflake data platform is, we are positioning that as a unified namespace for bringing together three types of data sets. There is IT data, there is OT data, there could be also third party data, which could be traffic weather information, depending on use cases you are trying to solve. For example, supply chain, inbound logistics, warehouse management, this data could possibly be important. But before I go there, what is Snowflake? Snowflake is a cloud vendor agnostic data platform. This is one of the most performant database ever invented natively on cloud. Again, I'll get into the performance numbers in a bit, but it is vendor agnostic. Uh, a customer could be using cloud from cloud infrastructure from AWS or Azure or GCP, or it could be mixing of any of these cloud vendors. We can manage data residing in these cloud infrastructures seamlessly for analytics without data movement, something we do really well. And you don't have to learn hundreds of services from these cloud vendors to build your own applications or leverage a cloud platform. So as far as Snowflake is concerned, is one single platform. Your interface mechanisms to go build anything in Snowflake it's all around SQL-based API. That's why OT world loves Snowflake because it is SQL, pretty much. And uh, there is no silos of data. You can securely collaborate on this data and again, without data movement. For example, you could be storing some set of data in Azure, some could be in AWS cloud, but you don't have to copy the data over from one vendor to another cloud vendor, pay for storage more than once. We leave the data wherever it is and run analytics on this and drive collaboration as well seamlessly between two different enterprises. In addition to that, we also support various types of AI and ML modeling capability. In addition to that, obviously all LLM capabilities are supported. In fact, literally a day before we announced our own LLM called as Arctic, Snowflake Arctic with much higher performance, lower costs, and all those fun things, just announced uh, a day back. But the key differentiator for us is you don't ship the data around for analytics because that leads to governance issues, security issues, and additional cost, and over a period of time, leading to hundreds of repositories of data being stored around the enterprise. We move the analytics layer next to the storage and run the compute next to the data and take the analytics and provide it to the user. So you are not sending data around. That's another major differentiator for Snowflake. And again, this is the reason we are seeing so much success in manufacturing for doing analytics around IT and OT. So having said that, to go a little bit deeper into our capability, I talked about multi-cloud nature of some customers. In fact, most of the large customers we work with have more than one cloud platform. It's pretty common for large automotive or oil companies today, if I go into it, their product development organization could be with one cloud vendor. Manufacturing and supply chain could be different cloud vendor. Their aftermarket organization could be in a completely different cloud vendor, or it could be based on regions over acquisitions, which has happened. But switching that over to one single cloud vendor is not a trivial activity for most of them and they want to remain that way. And uh, that's where Snowflake comes in. You can have your own cloud infrastructure in different regions, uh, in the same region for different process areas, and leave the data within that environment. We allow seamless analytics of this data without data movement. That's one of the biggest differentiator we bring to the table. And even if it is a single cloud vendor, data sharing between two regions is highly complicated when even if you use the same cloud vendor, hundreds of services involved in case of Snowflake, it's one single service. It is SQL API with which you are going to share data. In addition to that performance, I touched upon it. So as I said, this is one of the most performant database ever invented today. So just to give an example, this is a dated information. This happened last year in April, for example, on a daily basis, there were 2.9 billion queries was done. And in a single customer's data table, there are 50 trillion rows and uh, the amount of queries we do in a one minute interval is around 160,000 queries. And just for five customers, the amount of data sitting within their customer's database within Snowflake is 177 petabytes. This is the kind of big data we handle. So bringing this large volume of OT data and IT data together to drive convergence and analytics is not an issue in Snowflake. In addition to that, 
the globe on the right it's not just animation which we came up this this is literally taken out of our monitoring applications in snowflake every dot represents an organization sharing data with some other organization for whatever reason supply chain reasons it could be traffic data weather data being sold in our marketplace so and again talking about marketplace there are thousands of data vendors who are monetizing their data products in our marketplace and selling that capability to different organizations who are already in the snowflake ecosystem pretty powerful ecosystem which customers are trying to leverage which uh, with data products which are agnostic of cloud data vendors underneath and sell it you write code once on top of snowflake infrastructure we take care of underlying complexity and we make sure that it is going to work for all three cloud platform you don't have to write code three times for three different cloud vendor we take care of it so this is what snowflake does it can help you build data products and at a global scale and also monetize it so in addition to that now getting into manufacturing i think travis touched upon it edge to cloud business outcome every customer out there is trying to get to cloud infrastructure to leverage unlimited compute available and a much superior ai and ml tool is to derive value out of the data and if I categorize it in a systemic fashion, there are end of the day, this comes down to different types of analytics you can perform on a Snowflake uh, data platform. It could be simple dashboarding, which falls into descriptive analytics, data visualization, whether it is OEE, cycle time, throughput, yield, common solution accelerators are required by customers. We have built those accelerators on Snowflake and we've provided free of cost. We don't charge anything beyond the underlying compute cost. We we charge for customers when they use the platform. These are all the accelerators we build free of cost. In addition to that, there are diagnostic analytics capability customers are expecting, which is root cause analysis. We have LLM powered chatbots with which you can seamlessly navigate your data. We generate even the SQL code. The system generate the SQL code for you, given what kind of data you're expecting using LLM interface. And then after that, you can visualize the data as well using LLM capabilities. We are providing vision-based quality control solutions. And in addition to that, there are standard predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics capability customers are expecting, like predictive maintenance, predictive quality, use cases like that, energy optimization. These are all the common business outcomes customers are expecting out of Snowflake, and we have tools for doing that. Having said that, how did we do what we have done around IT OT convergence, and what is our differentiator? To go into that, uh, I had to go back like literally around 18 months when I took the role to launch Manufacturing Cloud. Literally, it happened a year back in Hanover Messe in April of 2023. So I realized when I took this role, we already had pretty good IT data integration capability. And that has been our claim to fame. In less than 10 years, we grew from a startup company into a $2 billion company because we provided this amazing cloud data platform infrastructure for analyzing IT data and also managing third-party data in our marketplace where there are multiple vendors selling various data products today. So the biggest introduction which happened is last year was around OT data management. So the approach we took for solving this problem, when I say we took, it is jointly done between Snowflake, Cirrus Link, and Inductive Automation together to solve this problem is the first approach we took is this has to be an OT first mindset. We cannot have a mindset where we expect the manufacturing world is going to change because as a cloud vendor, we have come up with a cool concept. That's not going to fly. We have to understand that there is a 30 or 40 years of legacy in manufacturing world, multiple machine vendors, 30 to 40 different PLC vendors. There are 300 plus protocols with which machines talk to each other. We have to recognize this fact and added to that, there cannot be any coding involved to move the data from edge to the cloud with the context. Because the minute you introduce coding at the edge for bringing onboarding assets, this becomes an unscalable problem. There are millions of assets, even for a single large customer, writing a code to onboard an asset, it's not scalable for customers and it is too expensive. And obviously talking about expense, we have to keep the cost low, as low as possible to democratize this OT data sending to the cloud. That's pretty much was the goal we had more than a year back and we accomplished it around a year back, literally a year back, when we launched this capability jointly with Inductive Automation and Cirrus Link. And 
pretty much today we have this OT data ingestion capability, which Arlen is going to demonstrate, which is completely OT centric. It's as I said, it's we took an OT first mindset. And in addition to that, this is an edge driven where the manufacturing intelligence and expertise resides at the manufacturing facility. Only people there know what kind of data has to be published to the cloud and what kind of analytics is going to happen at a plant floor versus what is going to happen at the edge. This happens out of edge and it has to be published by exception because OT data, as we know, the volume of data is really high. We cannot pull the network down or increase the cloud cost by sending every possible OT data to the cloud. We do publish by exception. That's what MQTT does. And added to that, we want this to be standards based because the advantages this brings into play every time a new device comes on board in future and which is compliant to the same standard, uh, it is seamless to ingest this data and onboard this digital twin into cloud. That's another reason why we did this, which again, Sparkplug B is the standard we went with. As I mentioned earlier, this data democratization has to happen at scale. It cannot be coding involved here at the edge and it has to be at the lowest possible cost. Okay. And we, we achieved all of it because we use Snowpipe streaming of uh, Snowflake, which is fraction of cost compared to any other mechanism with which you are going to send to the data to the cloud. Travis already talked about, you have to use hundreds of services or multiple services to move this edge data to the cloud. I come across this architecture day in and day out every day because of past infrastructure decision has been taken at the customer side. Today, with this approach, we can simplify this drastically and lower your cost, and you don't have to administer multiple services, and you preserve the contextualization. And the data, have, data transfer to the cloud happens at the highest possible fidelity. Any possible data type at the edge can be modeled with the Snowflake platform today, and the data transmission happens to Cirrus Link. 